Hey guys, this is Bluff Monkey, and in this video, we're going to take a look at Expert Records LFO tool. Now, I think this is a, a fairly misunderstood plugin because it's not really an LFO, but it is, it is quite a tool. There's lots of things you can do with this plugin. It's not just for sidechain ducking, which I think most people use it for, myself included, when I first bought it. Uh, first video, we're going to have a look at the functions and the layout. Um, and the first thing I want to mention is this little arrow down at the bottom here. Every single plugin ever made should be able to resize the user interface like this. There, I've said it. It's such a handy thing to have because I use this on uh, my MacBook and on my big monitor screen and being able to resize it is just a, a bonus. So there, I've said that. Um, moving over to the left hand side here at the top, we've got the much overlooked filter section. Now this is very similar to the filter section in Serum. If you switch it on, the center section here is context sensitive, so whatever you're hovering over, generally speaking, it's going to give you an idea of what's going on. So you can change the filter cutoff and the resonance, the mix. This is a variable slider. Uh, depending on what filter type you've got selected, this will do something, uh, but not always. So some filters don't need this. If you pick a multiple or a multi-type filter, often this will be used to morph between different filter types if you give it some resonance and some mix value. See, this will actually morph between a couple of different filter types. So cut off resonance, mix, and then at the bottom you've got drive here, which again is similar to the drive function on the filters in Serum. Um, there's tons of different filter types here. You've got lots of normal ones, state variable, um, low pass, band pass, and high pass, then different um, six pole, 12 pole. Uh, so there's, there's tons to choose from multiple filter types, which have two filters mixed together and that's where you can uh, oh actually this see this this one for example this is doing something different I can't really see what it's doing here it looks like it's creating two resonant peaks so this must be uh, let's have a look yeah so the cutoff alters one peak and this frequency slider alters the other one and then moving down to flange type filters. So you've got comb filters, flanges, phases, uh, and then miscellaneous, you've got sample and hold, all pass. This is a reverb algorithm, French and German low pass. I'm not exactly sure what they are. And then you've got formant filters as well. So tons of soundscaping possibility with a filter alone. Moving down slightly, we've got an offset slider. Now what this does is if you've got a plugin on the same channel as LFO tool, that introduces latency. So for example, a lot of the ozone uh, limiters and compressors will add latency to the um, signal path because they're looking ahead at the audio to figure out what it is they need to do. So they, they need to take a small amount of time to do what they're doing. And what this allows you to do is because LFO tool is time sensitive itself, you know, this is, this is a time graph here. You need to be able to adjust that incoming audio to get back to where it should be before you can hear the results. So you can adjust that negatively and positively. And then next to that, we've got a waveform um, graph. Now, if you click this on, um, you can't see anything at the moment because I haven't got any incoming audio, but you will do in the next video. What this does is it overlays a waveform of the incoming audio against the graph that you've selected. We'll have a look at the graphs in a second, depending on the um, rate that you've got selected. So this graph represents this time, um, snippet here so at the moment this entire graph from left to right is representing a quarter note if you slide it over this way to a bar this then represents a whole bar of four beats if you're using four four so that's what the waveform generate uh, display does moving down again to our midi section now what this allows you to do this section here will allow you to have lfo to respond to incoming midi notes and what that means is uh, starting at the top, if you switch this function on, the um, envelope, this is basically an envelope, it's not really an LFO. So the shape you see here is very similar to an ADSR envelope and a synth. So you can change the slopes and you can add different nodes. But again, we're going to have a look at that in a second. If you have this function selected, this envelope will trigger when you press a MIDI note down. There's another function, if you click it again, which means that the envelope will trigger only once when you press a MIDI note down. So then it really does act like a true uh, synthesizer LFO, uh, LFO envelope. So let's switch that one off. Next one down is a note gate. And this 
operates on the idea that when you switch a note on, the envelope will trigger. So this will start its phase. And as soon as you let the MIDI note go, it will stop at whatever point it's got to on this envelope curve. Next one down is a velocity sensitive PD, PWN modulation, pulse width modulation. So if you switch this one on, you've got pulse width modulation on this shape. And if I move this slider here, you can see that shape moving left and right. So this can become sensitive to velocity. So if you hit the note softly, the PWM is going to be down here. And if you hit it really hard, it's going to be up here. So that's what that does. Next one down is a, it allows you to modulate the rate. So the speed at which this um, envelope cycles based on which note you're playing on the keyboard. So if you play a low note, it's going to be a very slow cycle. And if you play a high note, it's going to be a very fast cycle. It's going to cycle through this envelope very quickly. So that might be useful for dubstep if anybody still makes dubstep. Shh. Now, next one down um, does the same kind of thing, but this time with cutoff. So a low note, if we turn the filter back on and just choose a low pass. So the resonance down, we don't need that. So a low note will have your filter sounding down here. So if you hit a low note, the filter will be down here. And moving up to high notes, the filter will be at this end of the spectrum. So that's similar to key tracking. If you've got a key tracking function on your filter on your synth, that's what that does. Let's switch that one off. And right at the bottom here, um, this allows you to send MIDI CC out from LFO tool to other de devices. So you can switch that on with this button here. This um, button here will allow you to lock the MIDI CC values so that if you're flicking through presets, whichever MIDI CC you've got selected will remain between those presets. And this last one allows you to drag and drop um, a MIDI file from LFO tool onto another MIDI channel in Ableton Live. So I can just let that go. There's nothing in it at the moment, but it just, I'm just showing you that you can do that. So let's delete that channel. Okay, moving over to the middle section, which is kind of your meat and potato section in LFO tool. This is the graph section. Now, you've got 12 graphs to choose from per preset, and each one is fully customizable. And the way you do this, I'll start in um, window two, is these nodes can be moved around. You can click and drag these nodes around. You can also click the clear circles in between the nodes to create different curves. So you can go from you know exponential to linear to logarithmic curves. And you can also add new nodes by double clicking and take them away by double clicking. Um, something else you can do as well is if you look down at the bottom right here, there's a snap value. And if I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's very faint lines in the background. This allows you to change the kind of resolution to which you can snap these points to. So there's 16 squares across, 16 down. And if I hold alt click on one of these nodes, or I assume that would be command click on a Mac, you can actually snap these values to these squares in the background. So if I take this down to, what does it go down to four, then it's gonna snap between some very large, why is that one? Oh, that's because there's a node there already. Yeah, it's gonna snap between some very large values there. I generally leave it on eight because that seems to work for me. So if you drag it without alt or command held down, uh, it's free moving. If you hold down alt or command, it's gonna snap to the grid. Just one other function you can do, if you hold shift and click, it's going to create a, um, a kind of quantized step based on this snap setting. So if I put this up to 16, and shift click it you, you can create kind of um like trance gate kind of things with this so that's an easy instead of having to you know put a node in here put a node in here then drag one down here you can actually shift click and it'll do this hard work for you okay so there's there's quite a lot of scope for creating different shapes on each window this graph window um, this little function here allows you to change the um the scale at which this plays back. So you've got your rate here, which is a quarter note at the moment. So this will cycle through, this whole graph shape will cycle through once every quarter note or you know, quarter notes are what you put your kick drum on, generally speaking. But you can scale that rate with this function at the top here. So that'll be twice as fast and half will be half as fast or twice as slow. And then you've got a copy and paste function. So if I choose graph two here, I can copy it, move over to graph three and then paste it into the next window. 
and then you can save your shapes as well so there's a shape selector here so i can change window 3 to a side chain so there's lots of different side chain shapes you can use and then moving down to the bottom um, this anchor button here when this is selected it means that your lfo is going to be synced to your host or your envelope is or the the plugin is synced to the host if you switch it off you can see it starts free running and then you can change the speed at which this cycles through you can see that blue line there cycling through it will just run through by itself generally speaking again you're going to want to have this switched on and these will be um these buttons here this will sync to your this syncs the uh the the, the rate to your um door so if you switch this off it basically gives you a hertz value the speed at which the um the graph will cycle through again we leave that on most of the time these two buttons to the left here allow you to select dotted times and triplet times on the rate slider so if you switch this off it's just going to give you straight timings so half note quarter note eighth note sixteenth note but if you switch these on you get all the the bits in between as well like triplets and dotted notes as well let's just put that back to quarter so that's what these do um, let's go back to window one moving over to your swing slider what this does is it just adds swing to you, you'll see this um, in the next video when we actually have the thing running with audio in the background so that's a swing function like you have these swing templates in Ableton Live so it allows you to adjust the timing phase moves the phase towards the left on the right so you can change the phase again most of the time you're going to want to to work with the shape that you can see there but you can alter the phase if you want it's doing a similar thing to the offset here uh, but not exactly the same and then pulse width modulation we've looked at briefly this is like a bend function if you use massive or serum uh, you can bend the oscillator shapes this is kind of doing a similar kind of thing and while I'm putting these back to norm to zero, I will say that if you hold control click, that zeroes everything back to default value. And then the last function here at the end is smooth. Now what this does is if you've got an LFO set to an abrupt end, so you've got your audio, if, if you use this to modulate your audio volume, your audio volume is going to come up and at the end of the phase, it's going to drop down really quickly and that often produces a click. Now this smoothing function will alleviate that clicking. You can actually do the same kind of thing by moving this in from the end, but if you've got a more complicated LFO shape or envelope shape, you might not be able to do this with the, the shape you've got selected. So if you have something like this, you might not want to pull this end one in. You might actually want the, uh, the abrupt stop like you've got with all the other steps. So you can use this smooth function to alleviate that clicking that you might get at the end. And then the snap function we've already looked at so that's the graph section um, moving over to the right here we've got a preset selector which we're not going to spend too much time there's, there's tons of presets that you can choose from each with their own um, selection of shapes a lot of them have got shapes in each window not all of them though I haven't actually looked through the presets up truth be told trance gates uh, what else have we got miscellaneous and they're all they're all um, rooted to various parameters on LFO tool so pick your preset or design from scratch. Now, in fact, let's go back to an initialized preset. It's much easier to see what we're doing. So um, let's go back to a side chain shape. Don't forget we can choose shape, graph shapes here, and then entire presets here. The entire presets can contain 12 different um, graph shapes, but the shapes themselves, you're, you're picking one at a time. So go back to a side chain shape. Here's where you select the routing for this shape. It says LFO routing, but again, it's not really an LFO. It's more like an envelope. Now you've got a couple of options here. On the left, um, you've got an option to select a which window or which pane you want the modulation to source from. So in this case, the cutoff, this is for filter cutoff. So if you've got your filter switched on, this cutoff value will then be modulated by window one so this shape is going to modulate the filter cutoff so if we set this back to um, not anchored to the door you can actually see it cycling through by itself and now because this is cycling through itself you can actually see the filter changing because I've set this value to a positive value okay so that filter is being modulated by this shape 
And if we move this down a bit, and we add a few more nodes, double clicking, now the the graph is a lot more complicated. You'll see the shape, the, the filter shape doing different things. Okay, and you can do it negatively, positively or negatively. Let's just switch this anchor back on. Set that back to zero. You can do the same thing with resonance. So we can switch the anchor off. So we can, let's modulate the cutoff negatively and the resonance positively. Let's switch that up. Uh, so you can see the resonance moving up and down, which is this peak in the middle. That's because of this, this shape is modulating that resonance value. And then it's also modulating the cutoff negatively. So you can see it's, it's doing some complicated things. This is, this is a envelope based automation, if you like. Okay, let's switch that off again, set these back to zero. Next one down is volume. This will be your classic side chain pumping uh, kind of deal. So let's choose a side chain shape again. So now we've got our side chain on, let's do it on a quarter note. So if you have this set to a quarter note, let's find it. There you go. So this envelope is going to uh, cycle through every four beats or uh, four times a bar, sorry. So this is going to cycle through every time your kick drum hits, for example. So you can use this to do your side chain ducking because this is working the same way as a compressor. And again, if we turn the latch off, you can see the volume ducking as it would do if you're using a side chain compressor with a kick as a trigger. So that's what that does. You can do the same thing with panning. All right, so switch the, uh, hang on, let's just set this back to zero. Switch the um, anchor off again. And now you can see that the graph here is uh, modulating the panning. So if you had incoming audio, you can actually see the blue line do. Again, you, you can be able to hear what it's doing in the next video. I'm just showing the, the controls at the moment. So that's a panning. And then the, the last one is the, it's, it allows you to modulate the variable function on the filter. So if we have something that does, let me try and find one, that allows you to morph between different filter shapes. If we have all the other LFA routing switched off, then you can switch the anchor off. You can change that morph value by this slider here. So you can see the, the, the shape in graph one is modulating the morph parameter in the filter. Let's switch the anchor back on. Right, last thing in this section is the depth. This is just basically the um, global depth or the amount that these sliders operate on these modulation sources. So you can slide that up and down. Generally speaking, I leave this on 100 and I use these sliders to um, set an amount. But if you wanted a little bit more finer control, you could set this down to I don't know, 20, something around 20. And then these controls would have a lot finer resolution because they're only this is only operating from zero to twenty then positively and negatively, if that makes sense. Um, then the last section is this is like having a um, you've got a low pass and a higher pass filter here. So what you can do with this is it's a frequency splitter or a crossover. So if you you can filter out the low frequencies or the high frequencies. So if you have if you wanted to duck a pad. Um, for example, and you only wanted to duck out the lower frequencies, you can use this filter here to accomplish that, or you could do the same thing with the high frequencies if you only wanted to duck the high frequencies out. So it's a frequency sensitive um, crossover, and you can set the frequency at which this is set with the slider at the bottom. So it goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So that could be useful as well. So those are the basic functions of LFO tool. In the next video, we're going to take a look at the um, tools in practice with some audio in the background. So I'll see you then.